Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you, and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And if you uh, want to like, subscribe, and share the information that uh, I present every week, please feel free to do so. It supports the channel, gets the quality information out there, and. Um, if you are new, our trade process really is to combine fundamental analysis and technical analysis into uh, uh, making really the best trading decisions because fundamental analysis and risk sentiment really is the reason why um, any asset will move in the medium to long term. Short term is just uh, liquidity hunting generally, but uh, if you want to really kind of predict trends or whether the market is likely to range, you have to understand that there are divergences in uh, monetary policy that you can take advantage of so for example if one uh, central bank is hiking rates another one is cutting rates then you want to be buying the one that is hiking rates and selling the one that is cutting rates for example um, so we use fundamental analysis to establish um, you know trade direction based off of value and then we're using technical strategies to enter in supply and demand strategies like daily supply and demand zones capture pain relief as well as uh, stop hunting strategies and uh, yeah, just looking for uh, some entries in the direction that we want to trade in. So with that being said, let's get into the fundamentals and technicals for the week and starting off as we always do on the US dollar uh, index and uh, the DXY is just a measure of dollar strength against the basket of other uh, currencies. So we use this as confluence to see overall dollar strength and weakness. And uh, what's happened last week is uh, what I probably would have expected to happen. And um, we've seen a higher dollar. So higher dollar, and the reason why, the reasons why we're probably going to get higher dollar um, in the uh, in the foreseeable future anyway doesn't mean that because I'm long dollar that prices won't pull back. You know the, the trend is is to the upside at the moment, and uh, um, there are reasons for it, fundamental reasons. And uh, hedge funds capitulate on short dollar bets as losses mount. And uh, last year, up until probably around. Um, around January matter of fact um, we were actually uh, short on the dollar we were really short on the dollar against for example the euro and it was due to um, uh, several uh, fundamental reasons one being that the Federal Reserve were going to uh, they were implementing and they still are I guess implementing what is known as the FAIT um, which is the Federal Average Inflation Target meaning that they wouldn't raise interest rates um, uh, if inflation reached 2%, they would have to um, uh, see an average of 2% rather than inflation just hitting, you know, maybe above 2% of their inflation target. But that has now changed. There are several things that have changed. Also, as well, the uh, the US were lagging behind when it came to the recovery, um, you know, GDP growth, etc. They were really struggling. There was a lot of uncertainty around, um, you know, whether Donald Trump was going to be, you know, remain president, Joe Biden. Now things are a lot clearer. That trade actually is 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 over and um and the guys in my private discord group would have benefited from um that information that we uh that we um we understood back in uh january the 27th wednesday january 27th right and i literally put and i'll put this a couple of weeks ago but just for those of you who are new and i pretty much said i've been reading a few articles and there seems to be a bit of a shift between buying euros and selling the us dollar in the short term right it looks like europe is lagging behind in uh in in uh, behind the us in terms of vaccine rollout therefore projections for gdp will also lag so for the short term i am looking to see if there are buying opportunities and i said short term meaning one to three months this is back in the end of january so um i was looking at about a three month uh, period so looking for buying opportunities for the dollar uh, as long as the data supports my bias and that's pretty much what happened so um this is uh, uh, the shift that we kind of knew back in or, or I, I, the stance I taken back in um, January. <clears throat> End of January by looking at the data 
and you're pretty much seeing that play out as well now um, so there is a relentless feel to US yields even if they are not rising there is a certain inevitability that they will with the Fed targeting policy at the tail end of the distribution the outcome has never uh, um, outcome is an ever steeper curve the eurozone is still struggling on many fronts and so no surprise at the treasury bond and if you don't really understand that that's just basically talking about bond yields and bond yields are going up with expectations that interest rates will rise and interest rates will rise due to uh, economic recovery that's what's usually um, uh, I guess synonymous with um, interest rate hikes and cuts a growing economy and the higher inflation um, should lead to interest rate hikes whereas the eurozone is still struggling and uh, again um, just to back up that data, we will see we'll, we'll see a strong economic recovery, says Goldman's Oppenheimer. So Goldman Sachs are not in the business of trying to um, uh, go on TV and be wrong all the time. Um, so they're on Bloomberg. Bloomberg, um, yes, they do provide free services, but they also um, their clientele is 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 you know uh, is quite. Uh, is, is big money so when they go on you know uh, uh, Bloomberg and do interviews they're not trying to m mislead them their, their, their big money clients because of the fact that um, then they their, their reputation right so again growth this is just some more confluence that we understand with you know what's happening with, with, with the dollar so with that being said that should continue on into the, the the near future as long as obviously the data supports it um, don't just blindly go in so, so what you want to see is is pullbacks potentially into any kind of demand zones or just any kind of bullish price action where prices are you know making new highs, etc. So, if we can get a pullback into a nice demand zone, uh, you know, this week or next couple of weeks, and then you get some bullish price action, that is confluence. Now, we could see some. Uh, some disappointing data uh, for the dollar. I'm not saying it's going to be all you know um, easy, plain sailing. Um, so if you do get some disappointing data, then we are in a bit of a supply zone here um, that from back in November, which is fine. So uh, if prices do start to sell off, then um, what you want to do is go to um, the other forex pairs. So for example, the dollar, you know, yen, dollar Swiss, dollar. Um, uh, CAD, for example, and look for potential sell trades on those currency pairs. So the more bullish we see overall strength from the dollar, then we should see overall um, you know, strength on those currency pairs. And if you see any weakness, then this is what it is. But we're driven by the fundamentals, not from uh, the technicals. Technicals are just used as a, as a way to enter and looking for bargain prices or potential fair value. Uh, moving on to the... Uh, dollar yen and again has really been uh, spoken about really kind of buying the dollar um, you're seeing pretty much prices make higher highs uh, the, the Japanese yen doesn't really do well in a risk on scenario meaning that <clears throat> when there is yield or traders want to make a return um, you're not really going to buy the Japanese yen because the Japanese yen um, is actually uh, got negative interest rates. I think it's minus 0.1%. So you wouldn't really want to be holding Japanese yen. And you can pretty much see what's been happening, the positivity around the dollar. All right, so we've got a level there. And we've got a level just up to the highs. I've probably, got, I've probably put one uh, right here as well, matter of fact in that area there but again it comes down to whether you want to what direction you want to trade if we do get some risk off sentiment then this is actually going to be a fantastic area to look for any kind of short trades but for me the path of least resistance is to the upside so um, for me pullbacks into that area um, or if we even get a deeper pullback into the 106s not too sure whether that will happen anytime soon but you never know with uh, with trading and the, and the markets Moving on to the dollar Swiss, <clears throat> and the dollar Swiss again in the same boat as the uh, dollar yen. Uh, the Swiss franc, I think they're negative. I think they're negative 75. Um, sorry, uh, 0.75 percent when it comes to um, interest rates. Um, and uh, 
<clears throat> yeah, they're, they're, they're lagging behind the, uh, the US. So again, uh, there were some traders that did get in long in our private group around here and uh, really did benefit from you know this week um, with some uh, bullish price action. So if you get a pullback into that zone, I think that would be quite nice for a uh, for a continued long trade. And again, as long as the data supports um, the uh, long dollar bias. I've been, I was long dollar down here it's actually long dollar around here and ended up getting out around here and then was looking for an entry. Um, didn't manage to get in any entries uh, this week. Unfortunately, I missed out, but I did get into a few other really profitable trades um, over the past couple of weeks. So I'm not too fast. You can't catch everything, can you? Um, but the main thing is that, um, you know, the guys in the group are benefiting from the fundamental and risk sentiment analysis and understanding, you know, medium to long term direction and then capitalizing from the uh, from the move. Uh, moving on to the dollar CAD, and the dollar CAD is a bit of a. You've got two really kind of stronger currencies, so you're not seeing the dollar, the you know the the major dollar moves, US dollar moves that you would see on, for example, weaker currency. Because at, at the end of the day, what we're doing is is we're, we're trying to look for strength versus weakness. If you've got two you know strong currencies or appreciating currencies potentially, it's very difficult to you know you're not going to really see the trend, right? The market is likely to probably range because the market doesn't know where the bargain is or the bargain has been established right so you've seen this week really you haven't really seen much movement when it comes to the dollar cad um and uh I, 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 personally i'm not really um looking to trade this pair from a fundamental perspective even this zone if you're looking to trade that it's not really the best zone it's been touched several times so i'm not really uh keen on that one and even this level up top has been kind of touched several times um, it's okay as a level, I guess, but I really want prices to come up to if I was looking to short this 129 area to look for long trades. If I'm looking for um, sorry, short trades on the uh, US dollar and buying the Canadian dollar, if I'm looking to buy the US dollar, in fact, this zone though is technically I do like that. Um, and I think that would be actually quite a nice area to look for some long trades. So the one, two, four, one, two, three, because the question then becomes why should the uh, Canadian dollar strengthen over the um, the US dollar, um, uh, you know, so much that you know it breaks that level. And um, if we're again, we've got two pretty much even and growing economies, and um, uh, two economies that are doing really well, and monetary policy um, is uh, is more positive and I guess hawkish, then you should want to see some sort of ranging market at some point in time. And I think that's probably where the limit of the move is for the. Uh, for the short term unless obviously data changes moving on to the new zealand dollar us dollar and uh, managed to take profit um this week uh, took it uh, yesterday friday uh, in this area after getting short around the 7250 area really nice a couple of hundred pips on that trade really really nice i think the uh the um we was reading some articles in the group where we were talking about um uh, the 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 New Zealand dollar might actually start to strengthen, not necessarily against the US dollar, but it being a risk on currency, a commodity currency, um, we could see potentially this could be actually maybe a bit of value. But um, uh, the, the, the short trade really was due to um, uh, GDP going into the negative. So the fear of a double dip recession in the with the New Zealand economy. So um, as that came out, um, I ended up getting short here and really, really nice trades. And for those technical traders who always moan and complain about why zones don't hold and the reason why certain zones won't hold and will never hold is because, again, the market is not reacting potentially in the long term to um, to technical zones, right? If this is not seen as an absolute bargain for the uh, New Zealand dollar, right? If you come down to the D zones here and the market thinks, well, that's not a bargain and then, then they're deriving their value and they're, they're, they're buying of the New Zealand dollar based not on technical zones, they're basing it based off of, you know, fundamental zones, then there's no demand zone in the world that is going to work in the long term because the market is pushing, you know, prices to where they want it and where they think uh, value is so with that being said it's all about again you, the direction right you need to understand and um uh, really kind of 
um, understand why the market is moving in a direction or likely to move in a certain direction. And trust me, it's not technical analysis, and this is the reason why, uh, you know, 80% of 90% uh, of traders on Forex brokers, you see the data, uh, don't make any consistent money because they don't understand the long term direction, medium to long term direction of an asset. But with that being said, um, I think this trade for me now is over anyway. Um, I'm not really looking to get involved in the um, in this uh, in this trade anymore. Uh, I think it has come down. It's pulled back a little bit more. And again, um, the New Zealand dollar may want to kind of uh, um, uh, hold here anyway. So let's see what happens it might pull down a bit who knows but um for me i'm not really in this trade but if you are if you want to get long that's actually a decent zone to get long and i think there is yeah there would be a um, not quite let's see if there was any uh, major all right so there's a there's some um, support and resistance at the top of that area as well where you've got resistance 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 within that demand zone there so potentially could see a bit of a reversal a bit of a pullback into the zone and then a reversal so that's a decent for, for, for a long for a short trade meaning that you want to get um, short on the uh, New Zealand dollar and buy the US dollar then you're looking for a massive pullback at the moment and less prices make lower lows and you're looking for a pullback into a supply zone and then looking to get short moving on to the uh, pound dollar and the pound dollar <clears throat> again we had some strong uh, or stronger um, dollar sentiment which basically pushed prices through the uh, that demand zone but we did actually get prices kind of just about nearly ping off the um, off of that demand zone uh, the pound at the moment uh, or last week I should say there was uh, some some UK jobs data that improved despite the fresh lockdown but uh, I think the expectation may be that unemployment is likely to rise as the furlough scheme uh, support is unwound, which um, ING think could take the jobless rate to six uh, to six point six five percent. And also as well, there was a bit of uh, negative news regarding UK inflation dives, but it's unlikely to last. So steep discounting on clothing helped drive inflation quite a bit lower in, in February. But this is um, arguably only a blip on the road to two percent later this year. So if we do get again some economic growth, um, which is basically looking likely in the UK, surprise as it sounds um, I wasn't really oh sorry I wasn't really a believer in um, in buying the pound but it just seems to be you know perhaps it's be rallying on one of the best um, um, currencies uh, when it comes to uh, the euro the dollar and the pound um, I think the uh, the pound is definitely second best um, out of uh, out of the three. So um, if you do want to be a buyer of the pound, I personally wouldn't be a buyer of the pound against the dollar, but you might want to be a buyer of the pound against some other currencies. Um, you know, some weak currencies like, for example, the pound Swiss with Swiss and the pound yen, which is what a few traders did get involved in again in the private group last week. So looking for um, any kind of pullbacks into a demand zone. If you want to get long, um, that would be probably the zone to look for. Um, if you're looking to get short, then you're looking for this zone right here. Personally, I'm not really looking for any kind of uh, trades on this unless prices really kind of come up to this this zone here. If prices can come up to this uh, 41, between 40, 141 and 14250, uh, then I will look for some maybe a, a, a short trade here because I can't see um, the pound really strengthening. Um, and again, it depends on the data. If the uh, US come out and they've got really good, uh, or really bad data, then this may want to go higher. Moving on to the uh, Euro dollar and the Euro dollar um, actually took full profit now from these trades. Really, really nice trades. So I ended up entering up here and entering actually around here on the um, on an, on another uh, trade. So both trades now I am out took profit down here and uh, I think this has probably got maybe some further to go but I'm not really gonna you know chance it um, if you are in any kind of uh, short positions uh, I, was, I was reading some articles um, 
by some banks that were talking about you know the 17 um 1.17 uh, area being um a target as well as the 116 as well but um uh, i'm i'm fine with uh, you know the uh, profit that we've made so i took a taking profit here if prices do pull back to a zone i'll probably re-enter somewhere on the underside of this level here so i think the, it might be due a pullback a bit of a pullback and then looking for maybe some um, some more trades here. If you are looking for any kind of long trades, now is a decent time. And uh, probably the 116 area. This is this is where um, there was the elections. Matter of fact, um, this was the U.S. elections. So this could be seen as a bit of a bargain at the moment. Um, but let's see. I think you'd have to really see some positivity out of the euro and the eurozone you know economic growth um the virus being contained um at the moment the uh europe's you know um uh, uh struggling with containing the virus so the currency dropped below a key technical level reflects the deteriorating dynamics in the continent's fight against the pandemic and um Again, we were talking about, you know, one of the strongest trends in the last 12 months appears to have broken. So the euro is no longer a consistent upward path compared to the dollar. And this is ramifications for virtually everything. Um, and there was something I was meant to read, right? So it talks about um, uh, the, uh, do, 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 do. it says optimism around about a stronger euro is being put to the to a rigorous test and why and the clearest reason is is the virus which was, was which dominates all of our lives the broader narrative of european european struggle with the pandemic and how it compares with america's battle on the other side of the atlantic is roughly accurate right so neva has done well in combating the virus as countries uh with wealth and advanced health systems should have done but the eu record has been appreciated appreciably better throughout but that is now beginning to shift yeah so um europe again as we know um not handling the covid well and the second biggest reason is the bond market expectations for inflation as well and again last week we did um uh, talk about the um uh the mind the gap on the the economy so Europe and the US are drifting further apart. So speed of vaccination and size of rescue packages help explain widening path to recovery. And uh, in this article last week or the week before when I was um, outlining this, uh, the US closes the output gap swiftly. So that's, for example, GDP, they're growing, whereas Europe struggles to rebound fully. So there are divergences. Yeah, there are divergences between um, the recovery. And that is really what is driving the euro dollar lower. Yeah, so no Elliott wave here. There's no, um, you know, no pin bar at a level of, of, of support or resistance, which is the reason why we're getting price movements. If you want to understand price movements in the medium to long term and really ride these trends to the downside for hundreds and hundreds of pips, um, these trades don't come around all the time, obviously, but when they do, you need to be able to capitalize on them. And uh, you won't be able to do that. Yeah, you probably take profit too early if you don't understand why prices should be you know around here when we were buying you know up here and around here so um but anyways from a uh, a continued sell trade perspective for me um any kind of pullbacks to supply our sell trades doesn't mean there's not an opportunity to buy the euro at some point maybe some negative us data but um for me um my the path for this resistance is to the downside as the momentum has shifted Moving on to the euro yen, and uh, as weak as the euro is uh, against the uh, against the yen, it looks to be doing uh, decent. I did outline this area last week as an area to potentially look for long trades if you want to be a buyer of the euro against the yen, and you can see the confluence within that nice demand zone that made higher highs, pull back, and then there was a trade right there. So really nice uh, technical trade, just nothing fundamentally. If you do want to get short then looking at that area up top for a decent short trade is um i like it technically but not necessarily fundamentally um they're basically it's the dog with the least fleas with with this uh with this currency pair moving on to the australian dollar us dollar and again two fairly strong currencies the dollar has benefited from um uh, some positive sentiment over the australian dollar but i don't think uh, this will be trending down for, for for like like it has in the euro for far too long. The Australian dollar is actually quite a decent currency, but I do like 
um, any of this uh, this area here. In fact, I wouldn't necessarily look for any kind of long trades here. This level's touched, you know, once already. Twice is okay, but I think the, the, the better area to look for any kind of long trades if you want to get long on this is um, just below, so the 75, 75, 50 area. Looking for short trades, um, buying the US dollar, then that's a decent zone for to look for any kind of short trades. But fundamentally, I'm not really um, interested in uh, trading this pair. As again, you've got two strong currencies uh, competing against each other. So um, it's not necessarily a, a pair that will I can see trending in the uh, medium to long term. Uh, moving on to the uh, dollar, um, sorry, Aussie, Aussie yen. And we actually managed... Uh, I think this was actually drawn wrong. It should be there. Um, uh, this is the this is a trade that I managed to get into this week. Really, really nice trade so far. Um, again, going long on the Australian dollar because in a risk on environment, commodity currencies generally do well. So looking for that pullback. You know, last week even though I'm long, um, this is seen as um, an opportunity to get long on a pullback. Right. So risk on um, Australia dollar should want to move higher um, in again the medium to long term and uh, in a risk off environment the Japanese yen doesn't do well so you want to sell so again there's divergence there right there's divergence between risk on and risk off currencies so these are the these are the kind of trades that are the easier trades does that mean that prices are definitely going to go to the upside and make new highs who knows nobody knows but the point is is that in in the probabilities game you know the path of least resistance should be to the upside so a really nice trade um, managed to get in actually at uh, let me just delete this and the guys will know as we went over this on the on the uh, I think it was the Tuesday or the Wednesday in our in our live group call so really nice trade here we are. I think the trade was at one, the stop loss was at one eighteen, right? Yep. And here we are. So far, so good. Um, so really nice trade so far. Looking to trade this up to uh, around the uh, the highs. Um, some profit has been taken as well um, due to the method that we use to capitalize on moves as prices are going higher. And um, yeah, really really nice uh, trade that. Um, so let's, um, I think that's pretty much it. If you are looking for any kind of short trades, I think the highs around here are really nice. Any kind of long trades, again, maybe a pullback into a deeper zone. Uh, maybe the 82 round number will be another opportunity to get long. If not, I think this 80, 81 area is a really nice zone to get long. That is going to be, um, uh, probably a, definitely a trade for me if as well if risk sentiment is on and the data supports continues to support the divergence and finally we have gold and gold has been going sideways at the moment um, over the last week but overall we're still in that you know that that, that downtrend and again last week was explaining that um, when you got you know dollar not only a dollar uh, an economic recovery um, you also have um, bond bond yields are rising so gold falls after two weekly gains as um, traders await bond auctions so gold declined amid concerns that treasury yields may rise further as investors brace for key u.s bond auctions and really when you when you um when you kind of understand why money would flow into into bonds and out of gold they're both safe haven assets right um um so if one is paying an interest and in yield, yeah, and one isn't, then money will flow into the uh, the, the safe haven asset that is going to be paying you an, a return just for holding it. Whereas gold doesn't pay you uh, anything. Doesn't mean that gold isn't isn't always going to be a buy at some point. Um, but if I was looking to buy gold, it would be you know I'd have to see really concerns about inflation going higher because. Um, gold is a hedge against inflation so inflation when I say get inflation going higher so well above the central bank's 2% target let's say for example it goes it's starting to go 3% 4% and it's, it's, it's inflation is getting out of control then for me if I start to see that happening or there's a talk about that actually happening then for me that is a, a nice 
gold buying opportunity. But for now, um, I think the path again of least resistance is probably to the downside. Um, there was, and I don't know why it wasn't drawn, but there was a supply zone right there. And prices did um, end up coming to the upside, breaking through a little bit. For me, I don't know, I wouldn't, it's not, I would, I'm gonna draw a supply zone here, but it's not the strongest supply zone. If I was looking to um, go short on this, then I'd have to wait for prices to really kind of come down, pull back up, and then look for any kind of short trade. Or if prices move up to this supply zone, and then look for a short trade. But fundamentally, um, I think gold is going to be probably suffering for, I say suffering, but it's not going to necessarily go too much higher. Um, definitely not necessarily to, you know above these highs here anyway for the foreseeable future. As long as money's kind of pouring into um, uh, uh, the uh, uh, government treasury bonds. So um, let's see what happens with gold. But if you do want to be a buyer, I think technically this is actually quite a nice area. The 1680 area is decent for a potential buy. Anyways, guys, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the analysis. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you find the analysis useful. And um, thank you for all the comments. Take care, and I hope you have a great trading week.